Am I a little off centered here? I think I'm off. There we go. Now I'm centered. Get yourself centered, boo. Hola, you amazing artist. I get asked by artists all the time, what should I create? What kind of art is popular? Um... Robbie's tips for artists because he loves you. One thing that I know for sure, for sure, as I am in this journey of an art career, is that no one knows anything about what art needs to be created or what you should do as an artist. Sure, I have my artist tips videos and there are plenty of people online that are charging pretty good money for uh, become a successful artist, just take our two-day course. And nobody else works like that except for like artists and music. You don't hear like get your accounting degree in two days on Facebook. Yeah, that like is... Like they think we're a bunch of suckers. Yeah, like a bunch of suckers. Do you want to be an artist? Come and take my five-day course on how to learn to be a successful artist from an actual artist. Um, if you're an actual artist and you know how to be successful, why are you charging me money to teach me how to do what you do? Are you making money off of me or are you making money off of your art? How to become successful at putting together a successful artist course. <laughs> Listen, everything that I say about how to be an artist, it should be taken with a grain of salt because it's all my opinion. It's my journey and these are the experiences that I've had. Now, if they're able to help anyone by giving them a different perspective than where they are, that's why I do these videos. But as far as telling you what kind of art you should create, that's, that's crossing a line that does not need to be crossed. There are a lot of very successful artists out there that I look up to as far as their career and their aspirations, the way that they live their life, but I never try to do what they do because I can't do what they do. I'm not them. I haven't experienced the same life that they have. I don't have the same likes and dislikes. The things that work for them are not going to work for me because we got to figure this out for ourselves. The only universal truth that was ever spoken in art was it needs more cowbell. Although I get this question often, it is always such a weird question to me because I can barely figure out what I need to create let alone figure out what somebody else needs to create. Back a few years ago when I first decided that I was going to do art as a career and was showing my art, a lot of artists came out of the woodwork and had all kinds of advice for me. And although their advice was completely heartfelt and I knew that they were trying to help me, their advice totally sucked. Clea and I live in a coastal town in the south, so we were told that if I was to make it as an artist, I would have to do a lot of coastal type art things. For someone like me, that advice is absolutely and completely disheartening. And especially when discouraged sounding artists were making statements like, you're in the South now, you know what people like around here? They like Jesus, they like wine, and they like the beach. So you gotta create one of those three. And they definitely don't like nipples. <laughs> there are certain people that were enraged because some of my paintings had nipples. If Jesus was drinking wine on the beach, chances are you'd see his nipples. <laughs> <laughs> All anybody ever buys around here is kitschy beachy stuff. You know, you gotta do beach paintings and sea oats and crap. Oh honey, yeah, you gotta do touristy stuff. Think to yourself, what kind of art would I want to hang on my beachfront condo? That's what you want to create. The funny thing is that they're right. That stuff absolutely sells, but that's not all that sells down here. A lot of these artists that were telling me this were kind of jaded. I think that they were making sense of why they had to create these things that they didn't want to create. So when they saw me creating my weird art, they're like, oh no, 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 that's that's not gonna work for you. And at the end of the day, they were wrong. I create my art and I have my following of my collectors and I don't do any of the things that they told me sells. Essentially, when anybody is giving you any type of advice, it's pretty much just an opinion. It's an opinion based on what they've experienced and what their level of experience is. So I'm not saying that everybody is full of crap. There are two sides to every coin, you know, different perspectives. And you could value someone's perspective and not agree with them. 
So what do I do when somebody comes to me and they ask me, hey, Rafi, what kind of art sells? Well, it's pretty simple. I just tell them why it is that I create my work. This is pretty much what I tell them. Now, some of you have heard that my life's goal with my art is to leave the world a little bit happier, a little bit brighter. And honestly, it just kind of seems like everywhere you look, things are just going to hell in a handbasket. Let's just say that it's easy to feel a little hopeless with the circumstances and situations that are going on in the world right now. Some artists have chosen to stand up to the oppressive powers and that is awesome. That's just not my thing. I can't help but feel that we got ourselves into all of these situations on every single front due to our own insecurities and our own fears because we believed a lot of the crap that we believed when we were growing up. Every victim and every person that worries and every person that is afraid was fearless when they were born. And every tyrant and every bully and every evil monster when they were small and they were a child, they had hopes and they had dreams and they had aspirations. At some point growing up, you learn crap from the people that learn crap from other people and then you start to believe in that crap. People who learn their crap from people who learn their crap from people. You feel the need to oppress other people in order to feel like you have a sense of control or you allow yourself to be controlled by fear and you become a victim. So then you've got a society just full of victims and bullies. We're not born hating and being afraid. We learn to hate. We learn to fear. We learn to be controlling and we learn to be manipulative. Manip manip manipulative. That. We learn to do that. I guess I want to create things that remind us of our own empowerment, that remind us of who I think we are. You know, something much more magnificent than a lot of us believe that we are. Does everything I create make sense to people? Does everything I create something that typically I could say, yeah, this sells and you should create this stuff? No, it doesn't. Everybody that looks at my art is going to see a reflection of what they see and they may not see what I see. If you're simply creating something because it's popular or it's mainstream or you have other artists telling you that this is what sells, but you're not creating it because you want to create it, is that really self-expression? And basically, if you're just creating stuff because it's popular, essentially what you're doing is your message is, yes, we must conform to what society expects of us. We must conform to what is easy. Yeah, so the whole intention with art is to express yourself, right? Your yeah. intention? Yeah. So if your intention is to sell, then probably you should just write on your canvas with a Sharpie. I hope you buy this. <laughs> we are the flame that ignites the thought revolutions by spreading ideas and feelings and bringing it into the tangible world. We are the creators of our own propaganda, instilling our voice into the consciousness of anyone that comes into contact with our art. We are the record keepers of the past, we are the record keepers of the present, and we are the foreseers of the future. We are artists. So create and spread your message. Yeah, so, um, so what should I create that sells? Just go create some sea oats or some crap. By the way, I don't have anything against beach scenes or sea oats or any beachy type thing. I have some artist friends here that create these beautiful masterpieces and they're very passionate about it. What I'm talking about is the artist that create beach scenes because they think it will sell. Serenity and nature's beauty, then sea oats might be right up your alley and more power to you. Exactly, exactly. And that's all I got for you today. I don't know if you could see it, but there's a chair back here that I will be turning into an art chair for child abuse prevention. They will be holding it for auction tomorrow at the Cordova Mall. I will put the information down below if you're here in Pensacola and maybe you could win it. If this video was helpful to you, leave me a thumbs up or let me know in the comments. And thank you so much, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking awesome. I totally adore you. And if you like this video and you want to watch more like this, you could subscribe by clicking right over here. And if you want to watch our last video, you click right over here and watch that. And thank you. Be the awesome artist that you are. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.